Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Well, hello. Thank you for joining me today for this episode of the Fierce Factor podcast. I wanted to put together an episode today that responds to some of the things that have come up this week with some of my clients and some of the other conversations I've been having with people. And I don't know if it's like a sense of feeling behind or feeling unproductive or unsuccessful because we've all just been burdened by really this COVID-19 pandemic. And I don't know, maybe it's just practices of really trying to recover and rehabilitate and just play catch up from having their brick and mortar businesses closed. But I've also talked to others who are just starting out and really wondering, when are they going to see the traction in their business? When are they going to start that momentum, really get things going? And you may be one of my budding entrepreneurs who are trying to put all the puzzle pieces together. And I know the last thing you want to hear is, be patient, my friend. Hell, I'd be lying if I told you I had a patient bone in my body. But I did want to talk to you guys about something that I have noticed through the course of having conversation after conversation with successful person. And that is something that I have identified as a success incubation period. And here's the thing. We're so busy thinking about our big goal that we forget about the process that it takes to get there. And I just think we have a false picture about how success happens really externally because we almost always see the result, but we never see the process. And if we think something is amazing or beautiful or brilliant, we see something that someone else has and we want that, we just think, wow, that's amazing. And the process of how they achieved that must have been just as equally amazing or beautiful or brilliant. However, 99% of the time, it's in fact the opposite. The process of accomplishing something significant is usually unsexy, painful, costly, embarrassing, or all of the above. And really my mission in creating this podcast was to help expose this, this kind of hidden underbelly of success, this incubation period where there's all that stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. And what it really does take to be successful is having this grit, tenacity, a fierce determination that so many of my thriving clients and guests on this podcast have embodied and really exercise on a daily basis. And what I found is that they've conditioned themselves to endure that pain or those embarrassing feelings or moments or take those risks, put the money out there, be willing to fail, try something new. And they kind of do it so much that they develop a resilience and that resilience becomes entrenched in their DNA. And in order to do that repeatedly, it takes time, hence the success incubation period. So what I found is that successful people embrace this ideology that nothing really works as planned but everything works the way it's supposed to. Okay, so let me repeat that. Nothing works as planned, but everything works the way it's supposed to. So basically, they're prepared to go all in because they're confident that regardless of what happens, they're going to learn from their mistakes, the mishaps, the blind spots, basically do it one time and realize, eh, shouldn't have done it that way. But that gift of doing it, even doing it wrong and knowing how to build it right is part of that process of becoming successful. So they've developed both a toughness and a flexibility, which I think is so interesting. So basically, they're able to bend, but they'll never break. A mentor of mine, Eleanor Beaton, would describe having the fierce factor 
as growing and slaying in the presence of your own perfection. So she says, initiate action when you are 70% ready and do what you can with what you have when you have it, which I totally agree with. So for example, I developed my academy program when it was simply just a seedling idea because I knew it was what our industry needed. And then COVID hit and what my clients needed was a lower priced, higher value opportunity to have access to first-in-class coaching, elite business strategy, and a powerful community of other like-minded ascetic leaders. But if I hadn't started at 70% ready, I wouldn't have been able to actually build it and now be nurturing and massaging and growing and developing every day a best-in-class program. And I've been able to do that with real-time feedback and real results of actual invested clients. So rather than just creating something when it was 100% ready, which by the way, it doesn't exist, that never never does happen, I just kind of went for it early. And so going back to my clients who are feeling behind and wanting, you know, to make traction, you probably, something I'm kind of, you know, when I read between the lines, something I'm getting from them is that they just feel sick. They feel sick like they want something so bad, but they're so frustrated that they're not quite there yet. Just freaking sick as hell. But they have that burning fire inside of them. And I guess what I want to say is that I think that if you feel that way, that's your sign. That's you in success incubation. You feel like you're conflicted. You feel sick, but you're burning at the same time. If you haven't listened to episode three, Says Who with Dr. Sabrina Fabi, you need to go back. It's a 15-minute interview and listen to her story about how guidance counselors told her she wasn't qualified to attend her dream university. And she talks about that, how that just lit a fire inside of her that created an unstoppable determination to achieve just that. And she did, obviously. And that's her resilience. And all that process is kind of that that incubation, that development period of success. And, you know, going back to having that fierce factor, Dr. Fabi talked about the path that it took to achieve what she has. And what really stood out to me about her and some of the other guests that I have had on the podcast and I will be having as we're having conversations, talking about taking one small step at a time. So remember that process that we keep talking about, that transformation, that is something you just cannot rush. You have to let it develop on its own time. Anyone that tells you you can snap your fingers and build and scale a business in three months is flat out lying. So imagine a hundred foot tall palm tree. That tree had to take root first as a planted seed. That seed had to sprout and germinate underground. And then the longer those roots were underground, the slower the tree really grows. And then the sturdier and stronger it is. And then the more beautiful and fruitful it will blossom. I mean, imagine if you were trying to rush a pregnancy. Like, I've been pregnant twice and I know... Not a lot really changed for me. I didn't love being pregnant. Some people love that. God bless you. We need you in the world. But I still worked. I still worked out. I still pretty much ate the same with some exceptions. But, you know, I was kind of my same self. I still went to the same bed, you know. But I was growing a human inside of me. And imagine if I was trying to rush that. Like, okay, hustle up. Let's go. Come on, Cooper. Like, out out with it. There's a germination incubation process that has to happen when something great is being developed. And I really think that this same philosophy holds true for businesses. When we're working to create something significant, it takes giving yourself the grace and serenity to try things out, change our minds, see what works, make mistakes, And see what's in alignment with the person we are. We're not expected to have all of the answers right away. Things change. We change. Our ideologies change. We change as human beings. Like maybe you're working in corporate America. You've been after this 
promotion. And now that it's there, you have this gut feeling like, eh, I don't know if that's going to work for me and my lifestyle and what I really want to do. And that's okay to have those feelings. So here's what I do. Here are five strategies that I implement to really help myself stay focused on the big picture, but still enjoy and reap the rewards in the process of making progress. And I think that's an important thing. I think that to get to the next level, it's such a mind game when you're really working hard to accomplish a goal and you're so determined and you have that fire inside of you. You have to be willing to reward yourself for the 1%. You know, maybe you're taking a side move, like a, you know, lateral move in your career or even one that makes less money but gives you better experience or maybe you're going back to school or something like that. You, those are things that are going to help develop you in the big picture, but it doesn't feel like something that is making you feel accomplished right in the short term. And so one of the things that I do is make moves that are really going to produce a return for investment on my business. So I view investing in myself, my team, my products and services, and my audience all as a win. So I'm literally like spending time and money on other things, but I believe that that is an output that's going to automatically give me an input. So for example, I have a business coach. I did the Tony Robbins Business Mastery Academy last year. I am always looking to get sharper and smarter and stronger, you know, so that I can be somebody to bring better knowledge into my business, become more efficient in my business, train my team better. I invest in making the products and services that I create better. So I'm constantly surveying my clients. I'm constantly recreating and restructuring what I have to offer to add more value. Even if I have to raise my prices, I'm going to give more. I'm going to bring in people into my team that can add more value that can produce better results for my clients. Even my audience, that's not like a paid client of mine, just people like you who are listening to my podcast, who maybe someday you will be a client, but maybe you're just listening and you are learning and growing and becoming stronger because you are exposing yourself to new ideas and thoughts and concepts. And I think that those are areas that I feel good about. And I look at, I have a mindset of, optimism and positivity around when I invest in those things. So when I make investments, I give them time and space to grow. And I think that's something that's really important. Please don't make an investment in your business or in yourself and expect a return tomorrow and get impatient. I see this all too often, right? Remember, there's an incubation period to success that goes with anything. I see it happen all the time. You buy a new technology for your business or a new EMR system, a new device, a new invest in a program. It takes time for that investment to really gain momentum to if you use the tree analogy again for those roots to really dig down and and grip into the ground and get sturdy. And then for, you know, that germination process to work, you can't plant your flowers and then the next day go and start digging them up to see if they're growing. If you hire a new team member, it's probably going to take three to six months of true investment in them before you start to see things start ticking. And you have to be prepared as you're making those investments right? I talked about, you know, attending a training program or maybe go to a seminar, maybe go to, you invest in a program, right? Like my client are in an academy with me that it's a year long program. They're making changes in structure, infrastructure of their business now that they could reap the benefit of that five years down the road, right? They could tomorrow too. There are some things that, you know, obviously like tactics that they can apply right away, but Having that perspective of the long game will save your sanity when you are trying to benchmark yourself and your goals of where you are and where you're going to go. And the next thing I do is reverse engineer my goals. So I usually sit down and build out an annual plan and decide 
kind of break it down. So like if you set a goal, I do this with my clients too. If you set a goal for an annual goal, 400,000, you know that you want to make 25,000, right? Or whatever monthly could be a million. I don't want you to get off track by the numbers just to keep it simple and break down what you need to make quarterly and then monthly. And then what products and services you offer, what price point and how many you need to achieve that. Then you start using what you know about your numbers to put action into place that are going to produce those results. So breaking that down, especially if you have a team, is so important. It's really the best exercise you can do with your team rather than just looking at the big, big picture. If you know that you need 10 leads a month to get, you know, specific to that procedure then what do you need to do to get those 10 leads? And then those are the activities that you're going to to track and measure and hold your employees accountable to. So reverse engineering goals. The next thing is to execute at 70% to generate momentum. So when you have an idea and it's about 70% there, that's when it's time to go. And then you can make refinement and tweaks as you're moving along. But you you have to start somewhere. Like you can't just, you're not ever going to put a program out and it's done. You're always going to have to be reiterating and recalibrating it. So start it at 70%. So next, I would say, oh, I was going to give one example about that. When I started my Instagram, I just told myself, I'm going to make 50 posts in 90 days. That's it. I didn't care about followers. I didn't care about, I honestly really don't still, but... That's a different conversation, but I just wanted to make 50 posts that would be attractive to my target audience and just do it. And so I didn't have really a specific plan. I just knew that I needed to start generating that activity to get feedback and start to look and see what, you know, my audience was receptive to, what were they engaging with and what kind of content and topics did I need to create more of. So I would say just, you know, start with the action and the results will come. All right, number four, write down your 1% growth goal every day. So I use this analogy a lot that 1% plus 1% plus 1% 100 times is 100% change. So give yourself the space to feel good about 1% because the reality is we're human and especially with everything going on in the world right now, you probably want to cry a lot of the time and or, you know, shrink back up and into a fetal position, eat a lot, have an extra cocktail. So I know you feel like that, but if you put your focus and your thoughts and energy on the small wins that you're making every day, it's going to extrapolate your momentum and you'll be thinking about positive things and want to do more positive things because it'll make you feel good. And I would write it down, not just think about it. They say statistics show that you're 25% more likely of accomplishing your goal if you write it down. So I already know like 1% of you listening are actually going to write this down. But if you start every day in your journal writing, write down that 1% growth, you will see the biggest impact, I promise you. And then finally, find a colleague or a coach or somebody who can really hold space for those goals that you're trying to accomplish, right? So maybe it's not your husband or your best friend, or maybe it is, but you may need to have somebody else who can be really a trusted person in your life that's going to challenge you and that believes in your goals and that's supportive. And it's okay if you have to pay for that. You pay for that accountability, you pay for that person that really sees your big vision for you and can help you stay on track to getting there because too many times people that are in your life as you're growing, they kind of like, they like the person that you used to be. (laughs) They like you for you and they don't want to deal with the future you that you're becoming. And so they're not really totally invested in helping you get there. And so make sure you have that person in your life. And if you don't, you could seriously find mentorship through podcasts and through YouTube videos and 
through your social networks, people that you look up to and you admire and respect. And I wouldn't be afraid to work with somebody who, you know, or, or to even talk to somebody in another industry who can give you a different perspective, but not just hold your hand and feel sorry for you, but really help challenge you as well. And then, you know, I might recommend looking back at your content or your schedule from a year ago and just take a breath in and take note of the significant growth that you've accomplished in just 365 days. I know that for me, the most valuable gift that I have earned as a business owner over the past four and a half years is experience. The experience of doing something once and then learning from it so I can make those power tweaks to perfect it the next time around. You are going through experiences every day. You have no idea how they are going to impact your business or your future. Everything that you're putting yourself through, every time you challenge yourself, you are getting stronger and you're developing that resilience. And it's that resilience that's going to get you through anything. You might go work in another industry. You might quit working altogether and stay at home. I mean, God bless you. You have to be resilient for that, for sure. And I am fiercely confident in my ability to make decisions and take risks because I know that regardless of the outcome, I will have tried and learned. And I see this as a common theme, and I try to emulate this in people who are successful because that is who I obviously want to try to be like them. And if you're feeling conflicted, like you want to run through a wall, but you also want to curl up in a ball— Make a list and prioritize your goals and then your tasks. So take one small step every day, right? We talked about the 1% rule. 1% 100 times equals 100%. And just give yourself a break because those hurdles that you're facing, even these pandemic and the hurdles that, I mean, I can't even go there. What's happening in our country right now? And it's just one knock after another knock for some of my clients who were just getting ready to open up and then looting. And it's awful for on so many levels for so many people. And I want you to know that all of these are part of the process of that underbelly of success, that incubation period. And that is the process of growth for you as a human and as a leader And you're getting stronger every single day and closer to your destination. So I want to invite you, if you are an aesthetic business owner and you are looking to set your business up for really exponential growth, not incremental growth, you want to put your business in a position to thrive in this economy. You want to build systems. You want to put a strategy in place. You want to build a high-performing profit warrior team. Come join my upcoming free five-day boot camp, The Aesthetic Reinvention. It's going to be starting on June 22nd, and I will be discussing my four pillars for rebounding and reinventing your strategy, brand, and team to build a strategic plan that can withstand any economy. I'll put the link to that in the show notes. I would love to have you there. It's a free five-day boot camp, the aesthetic reinvention. And I would love to see you there. And for those of you who are feeling a little behind, feeling like you're not quite getting the traction, these feelings are all part of the incubation period of success. Write your goals down, stay the course, and reward yourself in the process. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Fierce Factor. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you subscribe so you can automatically get new shows every week. I'd also love it if you left us a review. And come join the conversation online. If you're an aesthetic industry owner, operator, or leader, please join my free Facebook group, The Tribe of Fierce Aesthetic Leaders a community of ambitious, purpose-driven professionals who collaborate and share best practices for growth in business and life. I'm honored you tuned in.